The South Pacific Division of the Seventh-day Adventist Church conjures up images of rugged mountains, dense jungles, and white sandy beaches. Here you'll find the countries of Australia, New Zealand, and Papua New Guinea, plus hundreds of islands south of the equator such as Fiji, Pitcairn, and Samoa. Each island has its unique people groups, culture, and languages, and each has a rich and fascinating history of Adventist mission. The South Pacific Division is home to 34 million people, including more than 400,000 Adventists. Most of these Adventists live on the small island nations, but less than 200 years ago, there were no Christians living on these islands at all. The South Sea Islands Museum in Kurunbong, Australia, houses one of the world's best private collections of artifacts from tribes in the South Pacific. When you walk in, you can't help but notice the 100-foot-long war canoe or the chilling instruments used by devil priests in human sacrifice. But these relics of a violent past tell a tale of a different kind of sacrifice, that of Adventist missionaries who risked everything to share the love of Jesus. In 1876, two Adventist preachers from the United States, J. N. Loughborough and James White, sent a box of literature to Pitcairn Island. Ten years later, a retired layman named John Tay sailed there as a missionary. His journey inspired Adventists in North America to raise funds for a mission boat for the South Pacific. Aptly named the Pitcairn, this schooner soon carried the Advent message throughout the islands. With its vast outback, unusual animals, and friendly independent spirit, there's no place quite like Australia. It's the smallest continent in the world and the largest country in the South Pacific Division. Of its 21 million people, more than 53,000 are Seventh-day Adventists. That's about one Adventist for every 390 people. For some time, church growth has been slow in Australia. Like most countries with high standards of living, the culture tends to be secular and materialistic. Regular church attendance has plummeted, yet many people long to find spiritual meaning. The city of Sydney is very much moving into a postmodern mindset where there is a, a, a deep yearning and a deep seeking for spiritual values. Uh, however, the church somehow needs to adapt and, and grow in such a way that we can reach these young people who are not so much attracted by institutional uh, religion, but are looking for a connection, a spiritual connection with, with a higher being and, and we'd like to introduce them to Jesus Christ as that person. Australian Adventists are responding to these people by planting churches to meet their unique needs. One church plant that's making an exciting difference is the church in the fields in Sydney. It was started by MacArthur Adventist College three years ago. MacArthur College is located in Macquarie Fields, one of Sydney's most socially disadvantaged areas. Three quarters of its 200 students are non-Adventists who are drawn to the school by the love they see modeled there. The college started Church in the Fields to more effectively reach its community with a message of hope. Today, between 80 and 100 people attend each Sabbath. Ashley is an 8th grade student at MacArthur. She's been attending Church in the Fields for three months. I like it how before I never really knew anything about Jesus or God, but now that I've come to church I've learned heaps and like, I really appreciate how much they've taught me. We all get breakfast in the morning and then we'd all come and sit down and we'd do like testimony and giving. And we'd all just sit there, talk about God and we'd sing songs and pray and it's just so awesome. Today, some 6.3 million people live in Papua New Guinea. More than 237,000 of them are Seventh-day Adventists. That's more than half of the 400,000 Adventists living in all of the South Pacific Division. Pastor Lynn Barnard was a pioneer missionary to Papua New Guinea for 30 years. Trained as a paramedic, he built and ran a clinic to treat lepers in the highlands. He would walk three or four days to reach a single village. Once, he walked 40 days to visit the cannibals of Karamui. These cannibals had never been visited by a missionary before. One of the national missionaries who worked with Pastor Barnard preceded him by a couple of weeks. The remarkable thing was 
that when he got in there, uh, the natives felt him all over as they do, and they said, oh yes, he's got plenty of flesh on him. And uh, their intention was to kill him and eat him. The missionary pulled out a picture roll and began sharing the story of Jesus. One man got up and walked forward, looked at the picture, and he said, I've seen the face of that man before. Mm. He'd seen him in the clouds. There's a mighty electrical storm that threw him on the ground, and he looked up to heaven, and he saw the face of Jesus in the cloud. Yes, and that was the beginning of our work. Pastor Barnard brought plenty of medicine with him and, following the example of Jesus, he ministered to the needs of the people, then told them about God's love. But there were dozens of villages missionaries couldn't reach on foot. In 1964, the church bought the Andrew Stewart, the first plane officially owned and operated by the Seventh-day Adventist Church anywhere in the world. Now, Pastor Barnard and mission pilot Colin Winch could reach many villages in a single day. The transformation they saw in the lives of villagers was amazing. What I remember most was, is their faces. There seemed to be a new light in their face. Before, because of devil worship, they, uh, they were frightened. They feared the night. They feared the next day. Um, but when Jesus comes into the heart, it changes things. Today, Adventist Aviation Services continues to operate mission planes. In 2006, Seventh-day Adventists around the world supported the 13 Sabbath offerings that helped purchase a 12-seat aircraft. They now transport missionaries, pastors, teachers, and nurses to remote villages and carry evangelistic materials and building supplies for churches to isolated areas and they also transport the sick to town for treatment. Roger Millist is a pastor and mission pilot serving in Papua New Guinea. He has seen the church grow, but says it still faces many challenges. There are many, many uh, places in those mountains and valleys that we've flown over today that still have not heard uh, the message of Jesus soon coming, uh, that we as Adventists um, know and love so dearly. The nation of Fiji is made up of more than 300 islands. Although some 100 islands are inhabited, most of its people live on only two, Viti Levu and Vanua Levu. More than half of its 944,000 citizens are Christian. The other half are Indians who have kept their traditional religions, many of whom still do not know about Jesus. The church in Fiji is vibrant and growing. There are currently 25,000 Adventists a ratio of one Adventist for every 37 people. For the past 70 years, Fulton College has trained young people from the Trans-Pacific Islands, but recently it has become necessary to relocate the school. The division has bought a beautiful piece of land, but funds are needed to create a facility that will better serve the youth of the church in the 21st century. One of our projects this 13th Sabbath is to help establish a new campus for Fulton College that will better prepare our students to serve God and reach more people for Christ. As you can see, mission in the South Pacific Division faces many challenges. In countries with a high standard of living, secularism and materialism threaten to stifle a heartfelt need for Christ. In the Pacific Islands, family ties and communal culture make it difficult for new members to part with spirit worship and animism. They often face persecution and rejection if they become Seventh-day Adventists. Yet, the church is growing. Sometimes the challenges loom like mountains, but the ocean of God's love is greater. It's washing waves of hope over people's lives and like a gentle tide, drawing their hearts to Christ. Thank you for your support in sharing God's love with the people of the South Pacific Division this quarter. <laughs>